No, absolutely not. You know, there's people who will tell you uh, that beaver can smell underwater. They can't smell underwater. They, maybe they could taste underwater, but they surely can't smell underwater. And uh, I know years ago when we had a lot of competition, there would be somebody else around. Sometimes I'd carry a little bottle of lure in my pocket and I'd pour it in the water after I made the set, but I was, you know, just had no value whatsoever, but kind of brainwashed people maybe if somebody was watching me, but has no value under the water. I think it was a year or two ago, there was a guy kind of promoting that, where uh, he was using scent on top of a beaver. I really don't understand what he was saying. And uh, I don't know how successful he was. I, I, I only remember seeing his ad one time. And I, I really doubt that uh, that would have any bearing myself. My own personal opinion, I, I don't think it would have any bearing whatsoever. This is a colony I trapped earlier, and uh, I left it. There's a couple beavers still left, and I came back on it now. Right now, we got about on this spot. It's probably about three and a half foot here, and unfortunately, this is something we have to contend with when there's ice trapping in this part of the country. And uh, this isn't too bad. You have to get in here with a, your snowshoes and shovel out a couple foot of snow before you get down on the ice. And sometimes you gotta dig holes all around and locate your feed pile. But fortunately I trapped this one earlier so I know right where the feed pile is. Right the feed pile lays right around here. In fact, Alan, you're standing on the lower end of it. That's the front door right there. Now we're right on the edge of it. And well we're kinda inside the feed pile a little bit, which is okay because this here is the uh, first of March and the beaver pretty well got that feed pile all eaten off under underneath us here. So where we had to stay on the outside edge of it before, now we can go in through the middle of it and it'll all be cut off down below. That's why we're going to cut this hole with a chainsaw. This ice here is probably yeah, maybe a foot, maybe a foot and a half thick. It's a little bit too much to work with a, with a chisel. I'm not as young as I used to be, so I got over a lot of that sizzling that I used to do lay in here we might as well take it off. Test that a little bit with a chisel to see where my feed pile, but that feed pile is pretty well cut off now. Yeah, we used chainsaw for years to cut through this thick ice. In the old days, a lot of this ice would be two, two and a half inches thick. Two and a half foot thick, I should say. Used a lot, you know, uh, longer bar on it then, usually you use the carbon bar and get way down in then we finish it out afterwards. A lot of guys say, well, a chainsaw will scare hell out of the beaver, but so just chopping ice with a chisel. So I, I, I never really had that much problem with it. I think I only had, all the times I used a chainsaw to cut ice holes, I think I only had problems one year, one time with one colony where they mo actually moved out of the house for a week, week or so they move back in. Usually if you're cutting the holes with a chainsaw they'll kind of lay up with you one or two days and it doesn't bother them that much. Hell, we used to run up on the side of the houses there and park the snowmobile on the side of the house and still caught beaver. I, I really doesn't, don't think that bothers them all that much. But... <laughs> 